Hello, my name is Nigel Griffiths. I work at IBM in the UK as a technical person. You can see my email address there. You can contact me if you like. On Twitter, I'm known as Mr. Enmon, as I am a person who is the father of Enmon that's available on AIX and on Linux. And I'm now working on a new tool called NJMon that's available on both of those two. But we'll come back to that at the end. This session is actually about getting hold of AIX, getting access to it so you can log in and try it for just $3 a day. You might be wanting to learn a bit of AIX, maybe you're a small project you want to do with AIX or some experiments putting together packages for a solution. And to do that, we're going to use an IBM cloud service called PowerVS or Power Systems Virtual Server to give it its full name. On the left there, you can find the abstract from the Technical University, partly to keep me honest and remember what I'm meant to be covering. Let's concentrate on that $3 US dollars per day. It's about the same price in the first approximation of three euros a day, or if you want proper money, then the two UK pounds a day, which is not very much. That's very cheap if you want to have a day playing, exploring, learning AIX. Now, if you create a virtual machine, use it all day for, say, eight hours, then the prices are even lower. You will have to remember to stop and delete your virtual machine at the end of the day so you don't have ongoing expenses. Of course, this is going to be a tiny AIX, pretty small, but it will get you going. You can certainly learn systems administration skills and you can try using it for running programs or compiling and developing code. No problem at all. You can, of course, grow that up to be a massive virtual machine if you want to starting off with a tiny one and then just changing the parameters for your virtual machine and turning it into a big one. Or you can start with a big one if that's what you want. We also got access when we're using the PowerVS for things like the open source toolbox. All sorts of applications are available uh, almost instantaneously, a couple of seconds away, and you can install some compilers and websites and all those sorts of things, web servers and all those sorts of things. But we'll get back to those later on. So let's talk about uh, PowerVS. I've got a simple set of questions I'm going to follow through and explain what's going on. Now, if you can't find PowerVS, well, you go to cloud.ibm.com and you're looking for Power Systems Virtual Server. I don't know where the systems appeared later on after we all know it as PowerVS, but that's the trick where you perhaps can't find it uh, very easily. Power Systems Virtuals. If you've been using cloud in the past, then you'll know what I'm going to say next is about PowerVS and what it's like to use it. But let's pretend you're, you're new to all this or you want to confirm your understanding. PowerVS is like your own power computers in your computer room, but they're now in IBM's cloud data center in IBM's computer room. And you want to rent the CPU memory storage and network by the hour. You have no access to the actual physical computer or the hardware management console that's used to control it or PowerVC, which is used to create the virtual machines or the Kubernetes or OpenShift that's holding the whole thing together software-wise. You control your rented virtual machines via a web-based user interface and that keeps things nice and simple. IBM manages everything up to the operating system and then you or your client manages the operating systems and all the software they put on top. Briefly, in the IBM computer room, you'll have access to S922s or E980s for small and large machines. Of course, the smaller machines have a lower cost. And your virtual machine can go from quarter of a CPU up to 143. The amount of memory, you can go down to a gigabyte. I don't think AX really works very well at the gigabyte. Uh, I prefer to start with like four gigabytes and let it cache some data to make it work faster. But you can go up to hundreds of gigabytes of memory if your workload demands that. On the storage side, you can go down to 10 gigabytes, up to many terabytes. On the network, you can put it on the public internet if that's what you want to do is have an internet facing service. Or you can set it up on a private LAN and have that joined to the LAN in your computer room. So it just looks like it's in your computer room or in a different data center. But otherwise, it can communicate with all your in-house on-prem operating systems. Of course, on the power computers, we run AIX, IBM I or Linux. 
So where is Power VS? And the answer is yes, it's all around the world. At the end of 2023, 18 data centers. They seem to add two data centers per year on average. These are the cities where they are. Some of these have, or most of these have, multiple data centers per city. This means that uh, you can do HA um, within your uh, country. Some customers need to have their data in their country, so that can be catered for as well. And in the next year, the end of 2024, we've got three more data centers taking it up to 21. So how do you get started with Power VS? Well, you need a web browser and an internet. If you're watching this video, you probably got those already. Then you go to the IBM Cloud website, but it can be pretty hard to actually find Power Systems Virtual Server in there because there's hundreds of services that are available to you. We'll come back to that a little later. So why Power VS as opposed to other cloud services? Well, who better to run a power systems in the cloud than IBM because we do actually understand these computers pretty well as we design them and make them. If you have power servers in your computer room and you're now moving to the cloud, well, we can move that environment into the cloud on the same power computers. Using Power 9 and Power 10 computers. This means that you could move it to the cloud and still have some of your power computers in your own computer room and some in the IBM Cloud computer room. And you can move the workloads back and forth. To be blunt, there are other cloud vendors claiming power-based computers, but they're really embarrassingly amateur. They're running them like an x86 sort of service without the bells and whistles that we have. With our power computers. My initial reason for trying Power VS was that I get quite a lot of email from people to say, I want to give AIX a go, I want to polish up my AIX systems administration skills, I have some projects I'd actually want to run on AIX before we commit to it, and getting access to AIX can be tricky. We can't run AIX on a any old laptop, for example. Power servers are pretty powerful, so they are fairly expensive. And maybe your company has AIX in the computer room, but they don't hand out virtual machines to anybody in the company just so that you can have a little practice on AIX. And we have a problem with the younger generation learning and skilling up on AIX, particularly systems administration skills, to get a better job, for example. Now, I noticed the ridiculously low price that we've looked at for a tiny copy of an AIX running in a virtual machine in Power VS. And tiny is all you need to skill up on system admin skills. You may need to go to a slightly bigger one if you want to run some serious applications and make sure they work together, for example. So Power VS is an excellent solution to this problem. There are some other use cases for tiny copies of AIX. I will retire in a few years' time and I'll no longer have access to the IBM computers that I do now to develop things like my performance tools, the Nmon and Njmon. Well, I can just use Power VS now at just £2 a day. ISVs might want to develop or check that their applications run nicely on AIX. Solution designers might want to try a combination of applications to make sure that they work well and interconnect properly. Maybe you just want to do some quick system testing before something goes live or run a benchmark, but your computers aren't big enough as an ISV or a solution provider. Well, you can just hire a bigger machine and test it in Power VS. So all of these things are requiring temporary access to power hardware running AIX and Power VS is an excellent solution. So what can't you do on Power VS? That's an interesting question. Well, you can't worry about a whole bunch of things, the electrical power supply, air conditioning, physical security for the room and the site, system firmware, adapter firmware, upgrading the HMCs, don't worry about it. They can't even worry about it. It's not under your control. Virtual I.O. server setup and management, virtual networks and disks, tuning your V.O. servers, HMC setup and management, staffing skills and shift work, um, error reporting, remote restart, networking, storage, physical infrastructure. You can't worry about any of that. It's not under your control. But that's actually a nice thing, isn't it? I'm having to move my computer room between two IBM buildings. It's a nightmare with all these things I have to consider to get right to make the move a success. There's also no access to the HMC or the physical server, and that's a bit of a shock for me. I love plugging in a new HMC and getting it working. While I can't do that anymore, it's not my problem. There are a whole bunch of features available by the PowerVS 
graphical user interface or the API. Things like setting and changing the VM sizes for the CPU, RAM, disks and networks, adding new disks, adding new networks and accessing new services from IBM Cloud. And there's some other things that are just not available at the moment. In no particular order, you can't decide where your VM is going to run its placement. Well, that's quite nice. You don't have to go hunting around to find spare capacity. Power VS will do that for you. AIX Active Memory Expansion, that would be nice. It could be added to the service. Live Partition Mobility, you don't have access to that at all. Although, Power VS, if you're running on a particular machine that they want to power down, they'll use Live Partition Mobility to push you to a different server without you really knowing about it. Things like shared processor pools and shared storage pools are particularly nice flexible features. They're not available at the moment. Um, the LPAR processor mode, this is like being on a Power 9 machine, but running your LPAR, the virtual machine, in Power 8 mode. That's not available. It uses always the, the default mode. Your operating system will negotiate the highest level it can run at. A huge pages, some high-performance computers uh, like to, to run with those. We have the uh, physical adapters. Well, of course, everything is pure virtual in PowerVS, so you'll be using virtual networks and virtual uh, disks. There's also things like the physical DVD drive or a virtual optical drive that's mounted on the VO server. Now, you can actually use COS, the cloud object storage, to achieve something very similar to that. Now, some of these may actually be available because it is a moving feast and the new features all the time. But I do recommend if you've got a feature that you want, do let the Power VS team know. It's by pressure of their users that things get higher priority and then you may get the feature you actually want in the future. So we want to use Power VS, which is part of the IBM Cloud. Lots of high technology, powerful, function rich service there. But that's a bit tricky for the first time user that wants to do something simple and quickly. It's a little bit like the JCP excavator, fantastic piece of machinery. You can dig out the foundations of your house, put in a swimming pool, start off a skyscraper, all sorts of clever things. But if you just want to plant one little rose tree, it's probably a bit of overkill. So what you want is somebody to sit in the cab with you and say, don't touch all those buttons over here. Just do forward, backward, left and right, up and down, and that'll get you the hole and you've got a first success in getting going with this new technology. So that's what we've got. The answer is Power VS for a tiny little AX virtual machine to keep the cost down. You can always grow it bigger when you've got sensible and larger workloads you want to get started. But how do you get started? Well, where does everybody go when they want to learn something new? The answer is YouTube. So I've created six videos that will step-by-step step take you through the process of creating your first VM or AIX in Power VS, and do some of the basic tasks you probably want to do on day one. You can see the link there, IBM Biz, B-I-Z, AIX on Power VS video. Altogether, that will take you about 90 minutes. So there's no chance that we can actually do that today in this uh, short session. You can find it also in my YouTube channel, Nigel A.R. Griffiths. There's 200 other tech videos about AIX and uh, Power, and a few more about Power 10 that I've added recently. The first one here is an introduction, takes you through how to create your first virtual machine, some of the things you might find a bit of a shock, and uh, might need to be aware of, and trying to make sure you're not scared when you hit one of these little uh, barriers to getting it to work. Number two is actually live creating a virtual machine and getting it on the internet. Note that this takes less time to do than actually talking about it in the first one. Then there's hands-on with disk. So we add a disk to the running copy of AIX, get it online to AIX, use it, then remove it and delete it. So that we're no longer charged for that extra disk. You can, of course, add lots of extra disks. That might be quite good if you want to try practicing with the logical volume manager, for example. Next up, I'm a big fan of the AIX open source toolbox. This is, I think it's like 400 now, standard open source tools, and it's all pre-configured with that copy of AIX that you can uh, start off with. You just type yum, install, and whatever it is, and it'll bring in all prerequisites for you, and it'll be up and running literally in a few seconds. Remember my initial thing that I wanted to do is get people to actually be able to practice uh, AIX systems administration and develop their skills? 
Well, this is the one for, for those sort of people. I created a large AI expert article with hints and tips, the 35 best bits of AIX. Uh, nearly all of those have an individual YouTube video to go and explain them, and then you can give them a try looking at some of the example commands. There's also links to the AIX documentation and articles and all sorts of things in, in there to get you started. This is a bit of a, a community project. Um, if I'm missing things or I've got things wrong in this article, let me know. We can fix it up for the next person that's trying to learn AIX. Not going to go into this in detail, but here's the top of the web page. There's 16 pages of information in here with all the best sort of things to go looking for. And the, the link there, IBM Biz, the same AIX on Power VS, but it ends sys admin and here's a list of the topics we have in there from the classic commands that are the same across all unix and pretty similar to even linux then we've got some things in here and don't forget the answer to every system management problem in aix is the smitty tool that's in here and a whole bunch of other things including some really top gun performance monitoring tools called nmon and njmon there's also a well hidden web page which is called the AIX PDF. So all the big manuals about AIX are collected here with links. I've come across some of these before, the performance management and the performance tools reference, excellent books to read. Then there's some other ones in here that I think are the important ones, the AIX commands, the installation, the networking, and the system management manuals. If you add all those together, we get 7,000 pages. And then there's all the other ones in here that I haven't had a look at in detail myself. Excellent resource if you want to know about AX and get into the details. Then the last one, I thought, well, hang on, the image that we give you may be slightly out of date if there's a new service patch come out. So how do you actually update AIX in Power VS? And I looked through the Power VS documentation and lo and behold, there it was. He used a command called Sumer. I've never actually used that command. I do this sort of the old fashioned way because I've been around so many years. Um, but very quick, nice command. And if you like, Power VS taught me a new trick about how to do things in AIX. Right, let's do a little recap then to make sure you're still in sync. You can do AIX in Power VS the hard way. You can now go to cloudibm.com. Going to give you a little hint in here to get over one of the hurdles that I found. If you click on catalog and then look for Power Systems Virtual Server, then you should be able to find your way because that's what I had to do. Of course, there's the easy way. You could look through my YouTube videos for an hour and a half, then you perhaps start again with the second one, the hands-on one, and uh, follow along as I go in and set it up. Also, if you're into the uh, Learning AX article, there's the second link there to get you to that web page. Now, I realized when I was creating this video that I've used up maybe half of my time for this uh, slot. We were aiming at 40 minutes, and so I've got some extra time to do some things. So I'm going to steal a few of those slides from that first introductory presentation to set the scene and set your expectations. Hopefully this will help you decide you really want to do this, about you'll expect what's going to happen in those videos. Now with Power VS, IBM wants you to have hundreds, maybe thousands of virtual machines in there, uh, large to very large virtual machines using lots of CPU and memory and disk space. And we want you to spend lots and lots of Euro dollar pounds, special new currency I invented, many millions of dollars that would be nice because uh, at the end of the day rpm is not a charity we'd like to make some money now power servers are seriously fast scalable computers with power 10 we're going to 240 cpu cores 64 terabytes of memory and pentabytes of disks and literally hundreds of adapters if you want those too and it's not really for microscopically small websites for example that you might want to run your family's and friends picture gallery from now IBM Cloud, the website, is built to handle this large-scale virtual machine workload, so it's not so good for your first tiny AX virtual machine, and this is where my videos will hopefully set you going along the right path. Once you get the first one done, everything will seem much simpler after that. This is from the first video, the introduction, and it goes into these five things that might catch you out if you're not aware of them before you start. First of all, you should create an account in IBM Cloud. And this is not a big deal. You put in your email address, it will send you a code, you put the code back in, and it'll ask you for a first name, a last name, and a country. 
no big deal. You, you probably enter things like this all over the internet. It just gets you an account so that they know who you are and can communicate with you. Next up, you have to find PowerVS, and that's the one hint I've already given you. Hit the catalog button at the top, then search for Power Systems Virtual Server, and you should get there very quickly. Then, whether you've got an account and you found PowerVS, it will present you with a top page, and there's a pricing tool there. So we want to work out what's the smallest price we can have for our tiny AX virtual machine. But it's worth doing some experiments in there. I've got a copy of the example of that on the next slide. Before you go further, if you want to use PowerVS, you have to add your credit card. This is because PowerVS is a premium service because these are actually powerful power servers. And so they're not more of the cheap and cheerful x86 variety. And so you have to type in your credit card before you can even get to the pages to have a look around what happens further on after the initial pricer. Then once you've paid your, got your credit card payment details in, then we need to create a resource, which is a very ambiguous name. I'd prefer it if they called it a project. One of the things in a project is which data center you, you want your computers to come from. And there's difference in prices for the various uh, data centers. I think this is just representing the tax in the various countries. It's that sort of uh, difference. There's one in particular that, that is a tiny bit less. I was going to go for, uh, for example, London. It's right, you know, 10 miles from me. Actually, I could say that I live in London when I'm outside the country. Um, but that was a little bit more expensive. And I think that's because we pay more tax here and computers are a bit more expensive in the UK. So I used the one in Dallas, in fact. I found that a little bit cheaper. I mean, we're talking like 3 or 4% cheaper, but it's worth having. I don't actually care where my resources are. Also for those projects, you might, if you're a big organization having lots of virtual machines, you might have uh, want to have different bills for each of those different sorts of computers. So maybe you'd have a project for your human resources systems and, and a project for your payroll and a project for your front end website, for example. And so you could keep them separate and have separate bills coming in each month. So you know then who's got to pay those bills inside your company. Now, ironically, when you get through that, the creating of a small AX virtual machine is really easy. Uh, and we'll see the panel that you have to go through and what to set them to to get the tiniest amount of money that you'll be uh, having to pay. Then you will need to access your virtual machine. Very simple. You click on a button that says console and it starts up a, a web application to let you log in. Then you will want to find out how to delete your virtual machine you'll be actually paying for your virtual machine until it's deleted. Don't think you stop paying for it if you just shut it down. That's because on power systems, when you create a virtual machine and shut it down, it sort of earmarks those CPUs and the amount of memory for your virtual machine for the next time it restarts. That's done that way so that if you stopped a virtual machine on one day and started it up a week later, it will get the same resources and it will perform at the same speed as it was last time. You don't get any funny unexpected side effects of shutting down your machine and it actually running somewhere else with resources. But again, that's very easy to do and make sure you do that at the end of the day if you're trying to minimize your expenditure. Now, if you're going to spend a week trying AOX, well, you could run it five days and just pay the 15 euro dollar pounds at the end of the week. So don't don't worry about it unduly. Also, I found if you're going around in the IBM Cloud uh, websites, you can go and find out about how much money you spent or looking at the documentation. There's loads of hints and tips and documents and, and uh, videos to uh, get you going with the various extra facilities. And remember, there's four or five hundred different um, services in here. Sometimes it's then, well, how do I get back to my virtual machine? And I was trying to backtrack in my web page to find the URL to where I could start and stop my virtual machine. But there is a way if you click the top left hand, I don't know, this is a sort of five line pancakes or something. Uh, and in there you can find your resources and then you'll find your virtual machines in there as well. So now you know this, um, and you know because it's aimed at much bigger people uh, and uses 
of an entire company when it's just one little person wants a one little virtual machine it seems like a lot of things to go through but it really isn't too bad again follow the videos and i'll lead you through it all and you'll understand what's going on and get it right first time once you set up all these things and you just want to create another virtual machine, it's really simple and quick. And the start of the virtual machine takes a minute, maybe two minutes, to actually get it up and running. Once you get to stage three, you're presented with the pricer, so you can see how much it's going to cost. After you've done the credit card and created the resources, you're presented, when you're trying to create your virtual machine, with what looks like the same pricer. It asks the same details, and then it will go on to really actually produce your virtual machine. But your pricer looks like this. So in here, you can see we've got catalog, power systems, virtual server. These are the, um, well, in my case, pounds and pence and fractions of a pence for particular resources per hour. Rather way odd way of doing it. This is the way the, the cloud people think. And you get a series of questions uh, down in here. And I've got the answers that I'm putting in a bigger writing so that you can probably see this better in the video. So we're going to go for Washington DC, or I've seen the Dallas uh, data centers are particularly inexpensive. Then we're going to select in here the scale out machine. The alternative is an enterprise machine like the E980. This is our top gun, fastest possible power nine computer. And that costs more money, so we'll avoid that. Then we're going to go for shared CPUs as opposed to dedicated. If you want dedicated, then nobody else can use them. If they're shared, it reduces the price. Then we have the operating systems in here. When you're actually creating the virtual machine for real, it will ask you which version of the AIX do you want. It will actually then give you a piece of disk. I think it's 30 gigabytes with that already pre-installed and ready to go. You'll type in root and just log in and then you can change the password to make it yours and make it secure. There's also available IBM I and uh, Linux on power. Then we have many cores. Well, of course, we can go up to many cores on our big power systems. Not so many on the S922, which keeps the prices down. And we can actually go down to quarter of a CPU core. Again, that keeps the prices down. If we're learning our systems administration tools, that's more than we really need. If you want to do something a bit more performance that you want it to perform quickly all the time, you could go up to one CPU or up to many, many more CPUs if you got the money. The minimum of the memory is one gigabyte. I don't think AX works very well on one gigabyte. I like to give it some more memory and then it's going to cache a lot of things in that memory and that make it go a lot faster. Further on down here, in here is the storage. There's two sorts of storage. Uh, tier 3, which are SSDs. Well, that's pretty fast disks in my humble opinion. Um, you can go up to Tier 1, which gives you an extra oomph in the uh, performance of the disks. And get those two tiers have different I.O. rates that they are happy to sustain. And then you decide how big it is. Down in here, you could ask for like 10 uh, virtual machines, all like uh, this one, but we'll just do the one to keep the price down. On this slide, it's going through it in a bit more detail. Uh, again, it's mostly to keep the prices down. It could be IBM or Linux. Um, yeah, the smallest number in here is quarter of the CPU core. The, uh, yeah, this is my minimum for AIX. It's not uh, anybody else's lim limit. It can go down to one gig if you really want to. I thought you had to have this first disk, uh, but that's not true. If you're putting those resources in when you're here in Create a Small AIX Virtual Machine, then you get all the same questions. I think, as I said before, you'll get ask for which version of AIX you want, so 7.1 and 7.2, um, but they're very similar questions, and then it will take a minute or two to actually create your virtual machine. You can wait there, update in the screen to see when it's in a ready state. Then you click on the console button, and you'll get logged in, and it'll look like this. So you have to hit the return to get back to the uh, login prompt, and type in root, and you hit return, and you get straight in. Well, you might think, that's a bit dodgy. Um, where's the security on this? But don't forget, you can only get to this Java panel by logging in as your IBM Cloud username and password and starting the Java program to get you, get you here. So it is perfectly secure. This machine isn't actually on any sort of network that anybody else can get to. It's not yet 
on the um, internet, for example, you have some other things you have to do. The first thing you have to do that before you get it onto the internet network or onto a private VLAN is you have to set the root password. It won't let it go onto any other network apart from the administration one internal to PowerVS. So the first thing you want to do there is to set a password and put it into a, to a password manager so you're not going to forget it. I know I've been there, um, but you'd have to recreate your virtual machine at that point if you forget it. Then what you do with a copy of AIX, well, that is up to you. I'm not going to cover those suggestions. I've got my system admin article to give you lots of things you might want to, to try out. I've got on this slide a few things you'd like to do. Uh, firstly, uh, the OS level minus S commands tells you exactly what you got. And when I tried it, it was the very latest version of AX 7.2 Technology 5 Service Pack 1. I think uh, that was a month or so ago, but I'm out to maybe um, Service Pack 3 in here. And then you can follow the SUMA command video to actually how to upgrade that very simply. Of course, the most important thing for you to run is Enmon. So here's a copy of it running. Of course, I'm the only person in here that's doing anything. And you can see that um, the power processes and its virtualization is pretty efficient. Here it is using seven thousandths of a CPU core at the moment. It's just ticking over, but you can get down that low and share the rest of the resources out to other people using the CPU on the bottom left you can see uh, yum search python 3 and it's giving you all the packages in here and if you put yum install uh, python 3 it will just go and install those and all the prereqs it's fantastic and you can get your favorite tools installed uh, very very quickly and of course with aix whatever you're doing it's going to be using, you'll be using Smitty. I just had a look at the Smitty TCP IP and took the default network and you can see it has a host name in here and the IP address. Of course, if you change that IP address, it ain't gonna work at all. You're getting the IP address. It has to be we're working in the um, Power VS. Anything else won't, won't work because it's all hard locked down for IP addresses and you can't guess anything that would actually work but it's nice to know what it is it will be a completely different IP address if you're trying to go in via the internet go and check the video out for how to do that so quick summary we have the six hurdles so that you're known for no surprises you know what to expect on the virtual machines that's actually the easiest part of the whole process We've got some nice online changes. We can add or remove disks, grow the CPUs up and down by a certain amount, and the same with memory. If you actually want to make a massive change to those, you have to shut down the virtual machine. Don't forget to delete the virtual machine if you want to stop those charges. The price that we looked at and the VM create, make sure you select the right VM size and the options if you want the minimum price. Of course, you can always make those bigger if you want more power to your virtual machine. Look at the hard way, just go to cloudibm.com and off you go. The easier way is to watch my v YouTube videos so you know what to actually do and what's going to happen and where to go next. That learning AX article might be useful to pick up some AX skills. Hopefully we've removed some FUD, some fear, uncertainty and doubt. So you're not worried about trying this. It is quite easy. And above all, remember, this is really quite interesting stuff. This is the way that computers are going to be running in the future and have some fun while you do it. Now, as a personal note, I'm quite a big fan now of Power VS. It's really useful once you get through those hurdles and you're actually using the virtual machines and changing them, and working out what's going on. It can be a really useful tool. I've got a couple of little projects I want to run. One is I want to run a little website for my Enmon users. They can upload an Enmon file and it can use Enmon chart to generate the graphs and send them back to you pretty quickly uh, at, at right there in your browser. I could do a similar thing with NJMon. Now with NJMon, it's more sophisticated and clever and I was thinking of running InfluxDB and Grafana on AIX and having it on the internet and then having uh, users can have a quick look around at the graphs and try things out in my own uh, sand pit type environment just so that you can see what's going on with my new tool. I also want to create a video about how to move your AIX from your computer room into PowerVS. You upload a disk image into the cloud object storage COS, and then you attach it to your virtual machine and you can start up your AIX.
a lot of people will be trying this as they move into the PowerVS service.